Hi everybody, hope you're well, hope your family's safe in these times of COVID-19. My name is Claude Bertoni and I want to say thank you for visiting my YouTube site. Hi guys, okay, so today's topic is going to be around dog obedience training centers. Now that, that can be a pretty daunting experience for anybody. So whenever I do an obedience training session with people, at the end of the session, people usually ask me, well, what are the next stages? What do I need to do now? And invariably, that will require going to a dog obedience training center of some description. Whether your dog's a pup or whether it's an adult dog, we need to look at options going forward. And people are a bit confused as to where to go, what to do. So this whole video is about trying to give you some information as to what makes a good training center good, what questions you need to ask, what you need to look out for, and more importantly, what do they offer you? And is, is that a good choice for your lifestyle? So if you stick through to the end, guys, I'll be going through a list of all the relevant training centers in our area and try and give you a bit of a rundown as to why I think they're important to attend. Again, any questions, leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again, guys, for coming by. Hope you find this video useful. Okay, guys, so we've finished an in-home session. We've got some pretty good success and we wanna know what the stages are going forward and what we need to do. So let's get on with it. Okay, so before we join up with a dog obedience center, there's a few questions that we need to ask just to get everything that we need to know sorted so that we can make an educated decision. I guess the very first one is what type of training am I after? Am I after competition based training or lifestyle? Now a lot of people don't know that there are lots of different types of training but there are effectively two types of dog obedience schools out there. There are ones that are run by the respective kennel associations and they're the ones that are based on trialing and competition work. So for example the Rottweiler Club of Victoria, uh, the German Shepherd Dog Club of Victoria, great dog training centers in their own right but their training is heavily focused on competition work. So they do trialing, which effectively means the training is pretty prescribed. It's pretty rigid. It follows a predetermined pattern so that everybody can compete across the board and that all the different obedience clubs know what they're doing because they're training in the same way. So while that's really good for competition work, it doesn't really lend itself to real life dog training methods. And then on the other side of the coin, we have what we call lifestyle based obedience training, which has got very little to do with competition training, but the training very much suits what you're trying to do in real life. So it probably would teach you how to walk with your dog loosely on a lead, but not to actually really work hard to perform to do competition work. It might teach you how to take your dog to to parks and actually get controlled in an off-leash environment in a park or maybe take your dog to a cafe. So the first kind of question that you need to ask is what sort of training do I want because that will split the options in half and then you can make a better decision. This is probably one of the most important questions that I like people to try and ask is are the trainers and clubs certified? And what I mean by that is dog trainers in Victoria potentially all the good ones have actually done a certificate three or certificate four dog trainers course in which case now that they've got that qualification they will want to align themselves with the dog obedience club that actually has the same criteria and credentials so good obedience clubs are certified and qualified and actually are registered with a governing body that looks after code of ethics and standards and actually has training that is based on some kind of proven dog psychology okay so the different types of of training methodology we'll discuss a bit later on but the first question is is the club affiliated with any kind of registered organization and are the trainers qualified or certified there are lots of dog training obedience clubs out there that are run by amateurs there's nothing wrong with that but you get what you pay for so if you want to go to an obedience center with the best amount of dog psychology and the most accurate and current up-to-date information certified quali qualified training centers are the one for you if you just want to go and, and just turn up and pay a couple of dollars every Saturday and just have some fun with training, then your options are more increased because you can just go to your, your local club down the street that doesn't necessarily need qualified dog trainers. Okay. Another question that we need to ask is what methods are used in training? Now the dog training methodologies vary greatly from club to club and dog training methodologies are usually driven by the accreditation that the dog training organization has. So for example, some dog training centers in Melbourne do not use any punishment at all whatsoever. Other dog training centers in Melbourne are what's called a balanced approach where they understand the, the benefits of punishment, whether you see it as a benefit or not, and how to administer it correctly so there's no animal cruelty, but they know that punishment is a component of dog training. 
So you need to align yourself with a training center that actually suits your code of ethics or your principles in how you want to raise your dog and how you want to train your dog. So there's no point going to a positive only dog training center if you understand or appreciate punishment in a dog. Likewise, there's no point going to an obedience training center that encourages the use of punishers if you are a 100% positive only reinforcement dog trainer. So what you need to understand is what are the methods and am I happy to utilize them? Okay. The next thing that leads on to that is what training equipment is required. And because every, every dog trainer has a different philosophy on how to actually train the dog and get the best results, certain pieces of equipment will be encouraged in one training center and not encouraged in another one. So for argument's sake, in Melbourne, a lot of dog training centers don't like you using correction chains, but most of them will let you use martingales. Some of them will let you use a head halty or a gentle leader, but other ones won't let you use a harness. So the first question is, what equipment am I comfortable using and what training centers will allow me to use what I am comfortable using? And if I'm not comfortable changing, then I need to understand why it's important to change. So lots of questions need to be asked around equipment as well. Okay. This is also a big question. What is the client to trainer ratio? When I was running my training center, a lot of clients when they rang would say, how big are the classes? And what I tried to explain to clients is it's the class sizes are irrelevant. It's how many trainers there are in a class. So when I was running my old training center, we could have had 30 dogs in a class but we usually had three instructors. So there's no point having a class of eight dogs and only one instructor and two problem dogs in the class and the instructor doesn't get around to help everybody. In a class of 30 dogs, one instructor may be running the class and the other two trainers might be going around assisting people with behavioral problems. So effectively, large class sizes are actually quite good, but with large class sizes, we also need a high client to trainer or high trainer to client ratio, which basically means lots of assistance should you need it. So don't be discouraged with large class sizes. Is the training pay as you go or fixed time interval? Now this is a biggie because a lot of dog training centers will sign you up for a 10 or 12 week course. Now there's a lot of benefit in that because you, there's an intake, you all start at the same time and you progress through the training together as a group. So you make friends and you start to develop a relationship with everybody. But the problem with a fixed time period, period course is if your dog is sick or you're sick and you miss a couple of days, there's a likelihood that you may fail. In which case, if you do, then you may need to pay that course registration or the course costs and start all over again. So I, I tend to discourage people from fixed time period courses. What I tend to prefer is training pay as you go. So the way that we used to run my old training center is there was one initial membership fee and then people simply turned up on a given Saturday and paid X amount of dollars and then they just came and go as they chose. So the content that was explained every week in the class was the same. Some people would do it to a higher standard. Some people were just starting to do it. So the content was the same. So you just picked up where you left off. So you weren't penalized for not turning up on a given Saturday. But again, all dog training centers work differently. And if you have a lifestyle that's very, very busy and you can't commit every single Saturday, then perhaps a more flexible training center is the one for you. If you're prepared to commit to 12, 10 or 12 weeks straight, then maybe a fixed time interval one is best for you. Important to ask and make sure that you know what you're getting up front. How much is the training and what are the payment terms? Again, this is very important because all dog training centers charge a different amount of money. Some charge an initial membership, which then means that the, that the weekly costs or the, or the bulk costs that you're paying for a fixed time are less. Other ones say, no, well, they, we've got a fixed fee across the whole year and you might have to pay monthly or weekly and there's no initial membership. So they all work differently, but it's important to find out upfront, what's the training cost? What are there any payment terms that I can utilize? Are there deposits required? And how do I go about paying? Very important, okay? What is offered in terms of socialization and habituation training? All of these are really important questions to ask. A lot of dog training centers, all they do is, is train obedience training, which is good because your dog turns up and it learns how to do obedience work. But what if your dog has an issue with bicycles? What if your dog has an issue with rabbits? What if your dog has an issue with cats or chicken or children or skateboards or wheelie bins or vacuum cleaners or whippersnippers? A good dog training center 
for my my money is one that actually has a really well structured obedience program but then looks at dealing with socialization which is exposing your dog to living things and how to relate better to living things and a habituation program which is getting your dog used to day-to-day -day triggers or distractions that you'll come into terms or into contact with in your day-to-day -day life and this is really important for lifestyle based dog training centers where what they usually do is say to the group the clients what problems are you having because if, if your dog has an issue with a vacuum cleaner, chances are eight or nine other dogs in the class might have the same issue. So they will usually have a recurring theme for about two or three weeks in a row just to make sure your dog gets used to different bits of things that it needs to get used to or dogs or living things that it needs to get used to. Can my family attend as well? And are there age restrictions for children in doing the training? When I was running my training center, we had a policy that no unsupervised children under 12 were allowed to attend, only because we need a certain level of maturity for a child to actually handle the, the lead and be able to carry out the, the work accordingly. If the children are too young, there's a great potential for a particular problem to happen. So 12 years of age was the problem that I had in terms of minimum age group. However, we did encourage the whole family to attend as part of the training. So if the father was the primary trainer, we did encourage the mother and the children to attend and to get involved in the training. Because one of the good things about a lifestyle based training center is that if there's lots of people and lots of children running around in the context of training, dogs are getting used to lots of different distractions. And that's a really important thing going forward. So can my family members attend and how old the children are is an important thing is the venue safe from unwanted dogs now this is a biggie because certain training centers will pick a venue for all sorts of different reasons some training organizations have a venue that's in a, a, a public park some organizations pick a venue that's within a closed fence environment simply because they need to control the environment the best way possible to suit their needs. When I was running my one in Berwick, we rented um, a, a very large Catholic school and it was a closed gate entry. So we had access and controlled who turned up to the training center at any given time. So we knew that there would be no dogs running in off the street with people playing with their dogs and having a potential stray dog would come into a class and potentially cause a problem. There's a benefit to that. A lot of training centers that are run on a public park can't necessarily control that and not saying that it's a problem because I'm sure that they'll have measures and means in place to make sure that nothing untoward happens. But if it's in an external environment that's a park environment and you're not comfortable with that, then you need to feel comfortable at the training center that you're going to. So finding out what sort of venue is important. Also, some training centers are indoors and that's a great thing as well because it provides an option for working in inclement weather internally so you're not restricted by weather okay usually the problem with dog training centers that are indoors the environment is significantly smaller and if it's a large environment it can potentially be noisy and echoey so there's a lot of questions that you need to ask in terms of venue subject to how you want to feel when you go to training how comfortable you are being exposed to the general public and whether you do require a little bit of safety. Okay, so these are the main questions that I think are important to ask. I'm sure most of you will have a lot more questions to ask, but these are the, the entry point questions that are quite important. Okay, folks, good work making it this far. So here is my pick of the best uh, qualified dog training schools in Melbourne. They are in no particular order, but they are basically listed depending on what part of Melbourne they are in so that it may help you to determine which is the closest dog training center to you and if there happens to be another one that I list that you potentially like more at least you know roughly what area of Melbourne they will be in okay so the first one that I'd like to suggest in is in the eastern part of Melbourne it's a place called Canine Resolutions now these guys are located in Narry Warren they have National Dog Trainers Federation Certificate 3 Qualified Dog Trainers and they run puppy classes right the way through to advanced obedience. It's an external environment which is in the confines of a public school. So they can restrict access to the school itself. So it's actually quite a good little dog training center. The next one is a place called Command uh, Dog Training. These guys are located in the southeast of Melbourne. They are effectively located in Oakley. 
They're run by the Australian Association of Professional Dog Trainers. Uh, they're certified through the Certified Instructor Training Course, and they run dog training from puppies through to advanced obedience as well. This is an outdoor environment. I'm pretty sure that it's in a, in a park setting as well, so um, there are good options to learn here. The third one is located a bit closer to the middle of Melbourne. Uh, it's a place called Positive Canine Training. Now, these guys are located in Kew. National Dog Trainers Federation Certificate 3 Certified Dog Trainers. They run puppies through to advanced as well. Uh, the training takes place externally in a park. So again, if you have a concern about dogs coming in from outside the, the, the general environment into the dog training center, um, you may want to talk to them about how they manage that, but they are still a good dog training center. The next one is in northeast of Melbourne. It's a place called the Canine Company. Now, these guys are located in Mill Park, and again, they have National Dog Trainers Federation Certificate 3 dog trainers. They run training from puppies through to advanced as well. Highly competent dog training school. They run in a football oval from memory, so they will have measures in place to make sure that dogs don't simply walk in and impact the class. Very good dog training center as well. Inner Melbourne, um, so those of you that live close to the CBD, there's a place called Pro Dog Training, and these guys are located in Footscray. Again, National Dog Trainers Federation Certificate 3 Qualified Dog Trainers, Puppy Through to Advanced. Now, these are the only dog training centre out of all of them that run their training indoors, so they are actually weather friendly, but being an indoor environment, they are restricted to a smaller environment. So their class sizes may be a little bit restricted. So if you want the vibe of a large dog training center, these guys may not be the ones for you, but if you want that little bit more boutique feel where the dog training is all weather and it's a little bit more predictable, uh, these guys are definitely worth having a look at. And the last one that I want to talk about is located in the west of Melbourne. It's a training center called Four Paws Canine Training. Now these guys are located in Keelor Downs. Again, National Dog Trainers Federation Certificate 3 dog trainers from puppies through to advanced. They do rent um, a secondary school for the training so they can actually isolate or restrict access to the training. It's an external environment, very, very good dog training center. Um, you'll find all of these dog training centers are very, very good and they all offer something slightly different. So it may be worthwhile giving them all a ring, having a bit of a chat to them. They all know me. So if you say that Claude suggested that I give you a call, what do you offer? Um, they'll be able to look after you. There's a bit of a disclaimer that I want to put in that Canine IQ is not associated in any way with the above list of training centers, nor do we receive remuneration for any referrals. This is really important. I'm simply doing this as a public service because a lot of people want to know where do I take my dog to training. Um, I have no association with these guys, but I know them all really well. In fact, I've trained a lot of these guys when they were doing their dog trainers courses many, many years ago. They're all really good people in their own right. I'll be putting a list, a detailed list of access to these training centers in the description below the YouTube link. So say if you're doing a bit of research if you just go to the description you can click on it it'll take you through to their respective websites and then you can have a bit of a chat so i hope you found this useful if you have any questions at all that you might want a little bit of additional help with drop me a comment and i'll see what i can do to answer it thanks again for following me through to the end guys and for supporting my youtube channel it's really appreciated have a good day guys as always a big thank you for watching my channel to keep the information free and help share the videos please hit the subscribe and like button so we can share the message with everybody uh, to stay in touch just hit the bell button so that uh, you can be advised of future notification thanks again guys